If you ever ask the question, what really affects an electric guitar's sound? Is it the player, the amp, the tubes, the tone wood? Now I've done a series of tests that all come back with the same conclusion. Hell no! If you want to improve your guitar's sound, stick around for the next few minutes because I'm going to show you what actually makes a gigantic difference in your sound, and you'll probably wind up saving a lot of money along the way. All right, before we get rolling here, if you're new to recording and aren't sure how a compressor works, or you just need some overall help, please check out my three-part audio basics course. It's absolutely free. Links in the description below. Now let's get to it. As an engineer who's been recording guitar for many years now, I've gone down a number of rabbit holes when it comes to tone. And there is a lot of misinformation out there. Now I've observed that guitar players are just fine with comforting lies and really don't like it when conventional wisdom is challenged, especially when you conduct experiments using the scientific method and provide actual evidence. Now one of the first things I ever did on this channel was ask, is the sound really in the hands? And I invited three players over to put the myth to the test because it's something I had been taught and I believed as well. We used the same guitar, amp, cabinet, mic, settings, hell, we even used the same pick. And what did we get? Well, we certainly didn't get the massive tone shifts that I had been told to expect. Instead, we got this. Now, the most surprised person that day was me. I was expecting gigantic changes in the sound. But hey, that's what good science is, when you don't get the results you're expecting. Now, the one thing I've never seen anybody do since we've made this test way back in 2014 is to make a better test, because that would take effort. And we all know it is far easier to sit around and bitch. <laughs> Now, there were a lot of comments like, oh, you did that wrong. You used too much distortion. Play a blues riff. Okay, just to be extra super special clear so even the most self-absorbed guitar wankers understand. Yes, I mean you. Please look away from the mirror for five old fucking seconds and try and let this sink in. Spectre Sound Studios is a metal production channel. Now, what kind of music do we play on a metal production channel? Do we play jazz? Disco? Blues? No! We play metal, you stupid fucks! And this test proved that the player is essentially ballast. I have heard the phrase, the sound is in the hands, repeated so many fucking times, and well, it's mostly said by lazy people who don't want to put in the work to investigate what's really going on. The sound is in the hands, it's just a fucking cop out. And when you make the player the only variable, and I do mean in a case where everything is the same except for the player, there are no drastic tone shifts. Clarity in how the notes are articulated comes from the hands, but overall frequency response, without a fucking doubt, comes from the gear. Now, last November, I was experimenting with different types of vacuum tubes, and I came to realize that, crumbs balls, this isn't changing the tone of the amp either. Because vacuum tubes are not equalizers. They are designed to amplify a signal, and when pushed, they distort. And that is exactly what we observe. Some tubes are a little louder than others. Some will break up a little easier than others. But when we ran the test and eliminated all the variables except for the tubes, we did not get the kind of massive frequency shift that I had been told to expect. They sounded the fucking same. We even null tested and got some weird clicking. And that leads me to believe that tubes are distorting at different rates. But we didn't get a lot of highs or lows left over, which would indicate a frequency shift. 
like when you null out two different microphones. Now, of course, that video got a lot of hate and I got called every name in the book for daring to do some actual fucking science for a change instead of going along with the accepted bullshit. I got pointed to quite a few other videos when the tube was not the only variable. Different performances, different mic positions, hell, in one case, some kid showed me a video where he swapped his tubes and got a massive tone change. And he was playing through a completely different cabinet in each clip. And then some genius really got his panties in a twist because I decided to eliminate the one critical variable, the mic cabinet combo, as I didn't want to risk spoiling the experiment by bumping a mic because moving your mic will change your tone. Instead, I used a cabinet impulse and apparently that was worse than murdering Jesus because somehow using a live speaker has an effect on a tube swap. I'm going to call bullshit on that one because there was absolutely no evidence provided to back up that claim, but there sure was an awful lot of name calling directed my way. And what should come as no surprise to anybody watching this show is that despite all the complaining, nobody has yet to make a better test. And most recently we challenged yet another widely accepted bullshit claim about guitar tone and that is <laughs> tonewood. I had two guitars built exactly the same except using different wood. I even offered to give away one of the guitars to anybody who could pick out which guitar was in the mix. Big shocker, nobody got it. I had to give it away on a raffle copter. And hey Alejandro, I hope you enjoy the guitar. I'll get it in the mail in the next day or two. Bottom line, as far as metal is concerned, Tonewood is complete and utter bullshit. Spend your money elsewhere. So what exactly is the biggest deciding factor in your guitar tone? Well, I asked you guys what you thought and as of writing this with over 15,000 votes, 52% of you said the yeah. app. Hmm. Now I'm not sure I completely agree with that. Ola England did a video a few years ago called All Amps Sound the Same, and when it comes to tube amps, especially tube amps used in metal, there is some truth to that statement. Now don't get me wrong, they don't sound exactly the same, more like variations on a theme. A 5150, a dual rectifier, and a Soldano are all going to be quite similar. Let's run a mix here and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now that starts to change when you bring in solid state amps, which are very different beasts. Let's run the 5150 against a Sun Beta Elite. Okay, now we're actually starting to hear a shift in tone. But when it comes to guitar tone, the single biggest deciding factor, at least as far as I've found in my many years of recording, is the speaker and the cabinet. If you put the same speaker in a 2x12 and a 4x12, they're going to sound very different. In fact, what I'm going to do here is take the same Celestian Vintage 30 and put it in two different 4x12s as well as a Zillow 2x12, mic it up with the same 57 in the same position and the amp settings exactly the same. Check this out.
my crumbs balls. Now that is what you call a tone shift. Now the crazy thing is you can have a cabinet loaded with four speakers that are all exactly the same and they're gonna sound completely different from each other. Here's what I mean. Once again, we get massive tone shifts, way more than changing tubes or changing the guitar's wood. So why is the speaker not being discussed as if it's the most critical part of the signal chain? Simply put, we're a visual species. Now there's a phrase in the book, Bravo 2-0, that's repeated often. If it's shiny, I want it. And this really applies to the whole guitar tone thing because we listen with our eyes. Guitar bodies can be beautiful and we delude ourselves into thinking that somehow the makeup of the guitar body is somehow going to have bearing on the overall frequency response. And if you eliminate the variables, guess what? It doesn't. Not in any kind of way that's audible in a guitar mix anyway. Now the same thing's going on here with vacuum tubes. They glow, they're pretty. Ooh, there must be something magical about them. Nope. Turns out that one manufacturer's 12AX7 sounds pretty much just like the next brand. There might be output differences, there might be differences in the distortion threshold, but frequency response, no. Once again, tubes are not equalizers. But because they're shiny, we throw in common sense out the window and build up a mystique about these fucking things. But speakers never get their due, mainly because they're tucked into cabinets and hidden behind grill cloths, and you can't even see the labels on a closed back cabinet. There's no visual connection, so we're forced to listen with our ears, and that's a lot harder to do. So we wind up ignoring them. Now, here's where it gets even more insane. If you go down the Vintage 30 rabbit hole, there's a pretty significant tone shift from the early 2000 models to the mid 2000s. I've been working with a 2006 rectifier cab for years, and it might actually be working against me. I had a chance to visit with Christian Kola last month in Germany, and we got on the subject of older versus newer vintage 30s. And then Adam Nolly Getgood was kind enough to give me some advice as to what kind of cabinets to look for. So I've spent a good chunk of September driving all over Southern Ontario, hunting down Mesa cabinets from the early 2000s. And yes, they sound significantly different than my 2006 cab. Now, a lot of it has something to do with the fact that Celestian moved production to China, but I'm also suspecting there might have been a change in the manufacturing process as well. If there's one thing I learned from 27 years on the line at Chrysler is they are always looking to make things more efficient. So maybe the paper cones started coming from a different place. Who the fuck knows? Point being, there is a pretty significant tone shift from a mid-2000s cab to an early 2000s version. And this is where it gets even weirder. I had a chance to visit my old friend Lassa Lamert, who's recorded one of my favorite rhythm tones ever, which was Ailstorm's Terror on the High Seas. There's just this amazing high-end grind to that tone. And it was a 5150 plus a dual rectifier into an angle cap. Now Lassa was kind enough to let me plug into that rig and it was instantly a case of, oh fuck, there's the sound. 
I've got the same cabinet, but mine's from roughly 2006, but Lassa's is from 2000 or so. And upon closer inspection, I could see that the dust caps were different. His were nearly transparent, mine were opaque. I'm imagining that's where some of that high-end grind was coming from, but it also explains why I've never been able to come close to the sound he's been getting. Now, of course, the Vintage 30 sounds amazing, but it's also kind of been done. In metal, especially today, there seems to be this fear of standing out. Everybody wants to be safe and go with the tried and true method. And unfortunately, all you're going to get with that approach is something very boring and predictable. Maybe it's time to try something different. Try blending a few mics, try blending a few cabs, maybe even a new speaker design. Celestion was kind enough to send me a pair of the G12 EVHs and a pair of the brand new Hempbacks. The EVH is the classic greenback rated for 20 watts instead of 25, and the Hempback is a brand new design using hemp fiber instead of paper for the cone. Now let's see just how much this mix shifts by changing speaker types. All right, now things are starting to get interesting. I've loaded this incredible rev cab in an X pattern so I can have both speaker types in the same cab. Check out what happens when I start blending the speaker types versus a mix with a newer rectifier cab with newer vintage 30s. Okay, now that is a massive tone shift. The tone is not in the hands, it's in the speaker because a speaker is a filter. A microphone is a filter. The cabinet design is a filter. The size, the mass, they all affect the conversion of the electric signal that the amp is putting out back into acoustic energy. Tubes, not a filter. Solid guitar body, not a filter. And if it is, it's a really shitty one. Now, obviously, an amp is a filter and it's got one right on the control panel. But the speaker is the single most important part of the guitar signal chain because ultimately, that's where the sound is coming from. And we have got so many options these days. There's the new Eminence DV77, which I'll be demoing in the coming weeks. There's also the Heisu Demon that I really want to try out. Warehouse guitar speakers have been putting out amazing speakers for years, and I've been sitting on a pair of the Amperian demos for the last year and a half because the release has been delayed due to the same manufacturing issues everybody else has been going through. Metal tone doesn't begin and end with the Vintage 30. But on the other hand, I'd like to see Celestion go back to whatever they were doing to the Vintage 30s in the early 2000s and make that version of the speaker available again because those ones were very different compared to what we get today. Bottom line, if you're looking to improve your guitar tone, don't start with the shiny stuff. Take a look at what's actually making the sound and consider upgrading that. And the stuff that will affect your tone ships with a frequency response graph. Tubes and guitar bodies don't ship with frequency response graphs because they don't do shit when it comes to frequency response. Start with your speakers and save yourself a small fortune.